Once we have a best fit line, we're prepared to make some predictions. For example, here's a little study that a teacher did with some students. During the studying for a midterm, the teacher asked the students to each keep track of the number of questions that they solved on their own during their studying. And the result is shown here, along with the students' grades. There was a fairly good linear relationship between the grades and the number of questions solved. We note that no student reported doing less than 15 questions. And also, no student reported doing more than 85 questions. So, let's make a best fit line here. And we're ready to make some predictions. Before we start with the predictions, let me point out that all predictions are going to fit into one of two categories. Interpolation or extrapolation. Now, you're saying to yourself, oh no, that sounds like some big confusing words. And yeah, they do sound kind of fancy and big, but they're actually pretty easy to understand. Let's consider them. First, let's make a box around our data like this. All of our data fits within this box. So, any prediction made within this box or internal to this box is interpolation. Any prediction made outside of this box or external to the box is extrapolation. Let's try a few. What is the predicted score for a student who did 50 questions? Okay, so we identify 50 questions on the x-axis and we follow it up and across and we see that we could predict a score of about 65%. Is this prediction interpolation or extrapolation? Well, it's inside our box or internal to the box, so it must be interpolation. Another, what is the expected score for a student who did 10 questions? Okay, so we can identify 10 on the x-axis and follow it up and along, and we'd predict a score of about 30%. Is this prediction interpolation or extrapolation? Well, it's outside of our data box, external to the box, so it must be extrapolation. Another one. A student says they really need over 70% on this exam. What would you suggest is the minimum number of questions that they should do based on our data? So we look on the y-axis for 70% and follow it across and down and we see that they should be doing at least 55 questions. Of course, it's just a prediction, but our suggestion would be a minimum of 55 questions seems about right. Is this prediction interpolation or extrapolation? Well, it's inside of our box, internal to the box, so it must be interpolation. Now that we have a feel for our new terms, let's formally define them. So by definition, interpolation is making a prediction for a set of data that resides between two existing data points. We visualize this by making a box. Since the box extends from the lowest data point to the highest data point, everything within the box will be between two existing data points. So, it follows our criteria. By definition, extrapolation is making a prediction for data that resides outside of our existing data points. Residing outside of our box means that they're outside of our data points, that is, not between any data points. In general, interpolation is more dependable than extrapolation. And this is because Outside of our data set, we can't really count on the pattern continuing. It might continue this way, but we might see something different happening. Let's look at the lower end of our graph. Maybe students who do less than 15 questions during their studying find it pretty easy to get 40%, whether they do the questions or not. So maybe the real data 
would look like this. On the other hand, maybe students who did less than 15 questions just didn't try at all, and they didn't stand a chance on the test, and the real data looked more like this. Neither one of these possibilities follows our best fit line. So extrapolation based on our data wouldn't really be very accurate at the bottom here. And they're both possibilities. So our data set doesn't really tell us anything about the trends at the ends outside of our data set. Certainly, our best predictions are based on assuming that the same trend continues happening outside of our data set. And that's not a bad assumption. These predictions are still useful, but it's just definitely worth understanding that predictions using extrapolation are based on more assumptions than predictions using interpolation.